Hi, I'm Julie Johnson with Firebox Training. Today I'm going to show you how to install Oracle SQL Developer so you can talk to a database, an Oracle database, through a graphical interface. So now you no longer have to launch SQL Plus to talk to your database. Okay, so what we're looking at right now is Oracle's website for SQL Developer. So as of right now, we have, uh, we're at release 4.0. So this is at oracle.com slash technetwork slash developer dash tools slash SQL dash developer slash overview. <laughs> okay, so here we have our website. What I'd like to do is take a look at this downloads link. Now, in order for you to run SQL developer, you do have to have Java 7 installed. If you want to find out if you have Java 7 installed, one thing you can do is go to your command prompt and you can just type in Java dash version and it tells me that I have Java version 1.7 which is Java 7 installed. Now if this shows up and it tells you the version 1.7 then you're good to go. If it doesn't show up here, then you still might have Java installed, but maybe you don't have your path environment variable set properly. So one of the things you can do is actually just go to your control panel. So here, if you're in Windows, you can go to your control panel and you can look at your programs and features. And what you want to look for is Java. Okay, so I'm going to scroll down. This is in alphabetic order, and you can see here that I have some entries here for Java. Um, so if you don't have anything in here for Java, then no, you do not have Java installed. So the next thing you need to do is decide which download to use. If you already have Java installed, then you can download the Windows 32 slash 64 bit that does not include Java 7. If you don't have Java installed on your database, then you can download this one right here. But keep in mind that this is only for Windows 64-bit. So if you are on Windows 32-bit and you don't have Java installed, then what you're going to have to do is go install Java. We have a separate tutorial for that and we'll provide a link for it here in this uh, YouTube tutorial. Okay, so let's make the assumption that you already have Java 7 installed. What you're going to do is now download this guy right here. Oh, we need to accept the license agreement. Okay, great. I'll click on here. And now I'll perform the download. Okay, so it's asking me for my information here, my username and password for OTN. You can get for free an OTN password. So, uh, so if you don't have an Oracle account, you can do a free sign up right down here. Okay, so I go ahead and sign in. And now we're going to save our zip file. Okay, so it is currently downloading right now. We can see the progress. Be patient, this might take a few minutes, a couple minutes. Okay, so now I have my zip file in here. Let me right click and open the containing folder and there is my zip file. So if I double click on that, you can see that here's the root folder in that directory. Um, I can actually, here, you can see right here. Let me go back to my downloads. I'm going to right click on here and say extract all and I'd like to just extract this to just my C drive. Okay, so click extract and this will take a couple minutes. Once again, be patient. Okay, when it's finally finished extracting, you can see that I have my C drive there's my SQL developer. I'm going to double click on that and let's take a look at what we've got. Okay, so right down here is the SQL developer application. I can double click on this to launch it. Now, um, I can also send a shortcut of this to the desktop. You can do that by doing right click and send to desktop. So create shortcut. So we have it at our fingertips. 
You can also right click on it and say pin to start menu. Okay, so now when I have my start menu in there, I'm going to find my SQL developer right in here. Okay, so I'm just going to launch it from here and it asks what is the path of my JDK? Well, I happen to know that my Java development kit, I actually installed it under my C program files. Here we go. And then underneath there I have Java and I have my Java development kit. This is the one that I have installed here. And then select that and then I hit OK. So now it is launching. The first time you launch it, it might take a little bit extra time. Almost finished. And here we have it. So I'm going to uncheck that. I don't want automated, automated usage reporting. Let me just resize this a little bit so it all fits in here nicely. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is establish a connection to my database. Now your Oracle DBA is probably going to supply you with this information. Let me create a new connection. And I'm going to give this a connection name. So since I'm dealing with my HR schema, I'm going to call this HRCon. And the username is HR, and my password also happens to be HR. And if I say save password, then uh, whenever I connect, I don't have to provide the password again. Okay, so here, Oracle. Okay, you'll see that we also have the ability to tap into a Microsoft Access file. Let's just focus on Oracle here. The host name where my Oracle is residing is localhost. It's sitting on the standard port of 1521. And um, I believe my SID name is not XC. I think on my system it's ORCL. Okay. And um, I'm not going to deal with any of these other authentication types. We're actually just dealing with password, standard, straightforward OS uh, um, password authentication. So before I hit connect, let me just test my connection and it tell, tells me here it failed. So listener does not currently know of SID. So obviously I have the name wrong on here. Maybe it was ORCL2. Let me test this again. Once again, your Oracle DBA is going to provide you with this information. Oh, okay, good. I have success. Okay, so now I'm going to connect. Actually, let me save what I have so far. So now it's a saved connection. Now let me connect to it. And you can see in the upper left hand corner here, let me just pull this down a little bit so you can see the whole screen. Here's my HR con. If I expand this, you can see all the different types of objects for HR. So here are my tables. And if I click on my departments table right in here, I can see the basic structure of that. Okay, so here I can see the columns. If I want a quick glimpse of the data in there, here I can see some of this data. If I want to see the constraints such as primary keys, foreign keys, check constraints, and so on, no problem. Here I can see who's granted to what. So it looks like the user OE has select privileges on the departments table. Statistics has to do with um, metadata about this information. So here it was last analyzed for statistics on the 18th of July 2013. Okay, so here any triggers we have exist on there. Flashback has to do with um, kind of hitting the rewind button on the database. That's beyond the scope of this discussion. Um, dependencies. Okay, it just shows us which tables or views are dependent on my departments table. And then under details, we find just, you know, detailed information about the table. If it's a par partition table, it will show up in here. It's not a partition table. 
um, any indexes, and then finally under SQL, you can actually see the SQL that you'd have to issue to recreate this table. Okay? Okay, so let's take a look here. If I wanted to insert a row, I could do that through the data tab here. If I wanted to do sorting, so it gives us a nice little interface here. Um, other things we can do, if we want to, let's say, uh, create a new table, we can right click on tables and do that. Okay, what if we want to add a column to our departments table? I can right click on here and go to column and say, hey, let's add a column. Maybe we want to have a column called comments. Okay, so here I'm going to call this comments. We'll make this be a character large object. In other words, it can be up to four gigs in length. And then hit apply. Okay, so now it's been added. And you can see it's pretty easy to do that. Okay, so that's pretty much it. That's how we can look at the structure of our tables. Okay, so now what if we want to just issue some SQL statements against some of our tables? Well, the easiest way to do that is right in here. Here we have uh, this icon, which is for SQL Worksheet. And here we can select the connection that we want to use. So here we'll do that. And here we can issue raw SQL. So if you feel pretty proficient in SQL, you can enter it right in here. So for example, I might say, uh, select, let's take a look at our employees table. Select last name and first name from employees order by one comma two. So do order by last name and then first name. So I can run that statement if I want to and I get my results. Or another thing that I can do, if I'm not real proficient in SQL or if I just want to have more of a graphical interface, I can click on Query Builder and drag and drop the different tables over. So let's say I wanted to graphically build a query that involves a join between my employees and departments table. Well, I'll just drag my departments over here. And let me drag my employees table over here. And how about we display the department name, or actually let me do first of all the last name, first name, email, and department name. Okay, so the links between these, the foreign keys are already showing up in here, which is great. We can now look at this down here you can see that we have checks next to the columns that we're selecting. We can go back to our worksheet. This is the underlying SQL statement. Look how it's automatically performing an inner join for us. So I'm going to go ahead and issue this statement and let's look at our results. Now, if I want to save this SQL statement, I can do that. Uh, maybe I want to save it so then later I can execute it. Okay, wonderful. I just do a file, save, and here I'm going to save it under some directory. Okay, I'm just going to put this in one of my uh, folders here. I'm just going to put it maybe in one of my sandbox folders. Here we go. Okay, so here I can rename this to whatever I want dot SQL. Maybe I f call this uh, EMPS. Uh, department.sql. Okay, so now that I have that, excellent. Let me close some of these in here. So later down the road, if I want to reissue that SQL, I can just open and let me go to the directory that contains it. And here's my SQL. And it pulls it right into here and now I can execute it. Okay, well I hope you found this video tutorial very useful. Please visit our website at www.fireboxtraining.com.